Pani Hundelink, vítejte v Ostravě, vy mluvíte česky, víte? Děkuju, já dost dobře asi víc rozumím, než pořád nemluvím, ale mluvím, ano. Moje Němčina je ubohá, takže můžeme přejít k angličtině, prosím? Ano, můžeme. OK, OK. Well, you sang in Ostrava here shortly before Christmas 2020. And certainly this was not your first trip to Ostrava. You've been here many times. So what is your feeling about the city and about this theater and opera ensemble? Um, it's quite interesting because before I've been in Prague and then 2011 I was invited for the first time mm -hmm. to sing Yenufa. Mm -hmm. It was also the second opera I did in Czech language, so it was quite very exciting, all that together. But uh, I was uh, warmly welcome, uh, especially in the opera house. I had so many helpful hands with uh, the performing of, of uh, or the production of uh, Yenufa. And uh, uh, I can only say it's the same with uh, the city. It's kind of, some people might be a little bit rough. It's because mm -hmm. of the industry and so on, but it has, it's really, really nice, places, uh, beauty, its own beauty and uh, I really always like to come back because I feel feel kind of a second home, let's uh, say. For me too. <laughs> Ostrava is surprisingly interesting, quite cultural yes. and a lot of greenery by the way. Yes, right. In all cases, 2020 mm -hmm. has been a complicated year for everyone in culture. Uh, I suppose for you too. Uh, what of your performances that were cancelled are uh, you sorry most? That's one question. And the other question, is there anything positive for you about this year? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the most important thing would have been my debut at the Arena of Verona summer. this summer. Mm -hmm. Um, with Turandot, Aida and Nabucco. How three. many performances? Well, it's just always one or two performances of each mm -hmm. opera because I have so many hosts. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it would have been my debut and singing in the arena is something special oh, and something big. But I can say that I received already a contract for 2021. Mm -hmm. So I hope that will mm -hmm. work out okay. next year. So that was the biggest thing, but also every performance, every production that uh, was not performed um, was a pity and, mm. and I'm sorrow for that. And anything positive? Yes, it's always, you always have to think of something positive. Mm. You can take more time for yourself, think about certain things more. I really, really do like very much gardening. I see. And because I'm a freelance artist traveling a lot, then I do not have time, especially this summer. I mm -hmm. uh, um, planted a lot of uh, tomatoes. It was, and that needs time. You need to be present for that. And if I'm singing and, and performing, then I do not have the time. So that's the main thing. And yeah, to take care and think about a lot of things, to reflect yourself and uh, I think that that was a positive. Also to, to question yourself, is it the right way you're going? Will it be still the right way to continue? And or should somebody Maybe change think? potatoes into uh, yes. <laughs> something else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's come back to music, all yes, right? right. Uh, <laughs> you sang here uh, four arias by two composers and contemporaries, mm -hmm. uh, Wagner and Verdi. I know it's a complicated question, but still, uh, uh, which of them uh, understood inverted commas soprano better? And what is more complicated to sing, arias by Wagner or by Verdi for you? Um, okay, uh, I think uh, Verdi is the one who did not only write better for sopranos, mm -hmm. but in general for singers. Mm -hmm. The music is, is more smooth, let's say, to the voice. Yes. I also um, always say there's one writer who wrote a book about anecdotes, mm -hmm. and the title is um, uh, Verdi is the Mozart for Wagner. Mm -hmm. And I see it the same. I'm not mm -hmm. that much a Mozart singer, but I feel mm -hmm. that Verdi helps me a lot for, for, for Wagner, to perform mm -hmm. Wagner, to mm -hmm. keep the lightness, to keep uh, more precise and so on. So it's like uh, saving the voice and making a cure, a spa. That's what I always say. 
and uh, Wagner, yes, he wrote in a different way. It's not not at first sight. You cannot mm. catch him at first sight. I'm fortunate that I'm German, but that doesn't help always because you also have to um, take care of the words and so on and not just like you speak, but you have to sing, sing mm -hmm. it and, and make it um, clear. Um, but I also have the feeling that, that for Wagner, um, I was born for that. It's something mm -hmm. I had from, from, from the beginning in my, my, um, in my mind. Like, like mm -hmm. I do not have to think about that. I, I just feel it. And for Verdi, it's for me that I need to work a little bit more on that to really catch catch uh, the idea. I hear it, but sometimes I have to to work more on that from, from the stylistic way. And um, yeah, difficult. I love both. And if I find... We heard that. Yeah. <laughs> and we? if I find the right way to, to, to enter the part I'm singing, then it doesn't matter what I'm singing. And uh, I think in this case, the hardest is to have these two um, two composers together mm -hmm. because they're quite different and also like the first Wagner I sang the the Tannhäuser is different from from Isolde it's already quite um, advanced uh, in the composing what Wagner did and just one last thing I would like to add for that, Go ahead. because um, it was uh, Marek Shadivi who mm -hmm. um, asked for these arias. Uh, he knew I have them in my repertoire, but for example, Balloon Mascara, I have been sang for some years. Mm -hmm. And I first said, okay, I have to think about that because Wagner, Verdi, Verdi, Wagner, it's little bit strange but then I came to that point no it's really good because you can open up and then you can make this make this final with yeah. with Isolde yeah. and also it's uh, funny that I um, had as a first role Elizabeth from Tannhäuser my first Wagner mm -hmm. my first Verdi was Amelia and really? uh, yes and yeah. Ballo Nascara and the latest performances were exactly here in, in Ostrava uh, uh, Nabucco with Abigail and like in the beginning of uh, 2020 Isolde in Rijeka in uh, Croatia. So it's the first and the last uh, mm. what I performed. So it's quite you've an just, issue. You <laughs> just mentioned 2021. So actually what are your local, I mean Ostrava plans, not only for 21 but for more distant future? Because there are some gossips about Smetana, right? <laughs> Yes, there are. So? I'm, okay, I will start with that one. Uh, uh, I'm very, very happy that uh, I was asked to join the Smetana Zyklus mm -hmm. uh, with a part of Milada in Dalibor. Uh -huh. I really love that opera. It's People say it's it's um, close to, to Beethoven's Fidelio, but mm -hmm. I s always see a different. Smetana composed a little bit different and, and I really like that one so far. I just saw it, I never performed it, so that that's really an offer I like to go for. Uh, then for sure I will continue with uh, Nabucco performances as soon as we can play as for COVID the audience. Yes, yes, as COVID allows. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are just starting to prepare a new Tosca production mm -hmm. that I will join. Um, in, the, in the February will be, or is planned, the premiere. Then the big concert for Mrs. Orbanova. I'm joining her mm -hmm. in May um, in Lone Green and parts from Yenufa. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And you never know. We talked about some Wagner and maybe other things. We'll see. Yes. Pani Hunderling, <laughs> Miss Hunderling. All the best, thank you very much. And as they say, take it easy, but take it. Yes, you too, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs>